All right, here we are at our 2003 Sea Ray 240 Signature Bow Rider for sale. We're here on the beautiful fresh waters of Norris Lake, Tennessee. This slip is transferable, meaning the, the buyer of this one will have the option to leave it right here in its current location, which happens to be happens to be a pretty handy um, slip right here. You're going to be um, one of the first, first slips on the walkway here. And one of the shorter distances from the parking lot as well. So again, you'll have the option. There is no trailer included with this one. This one was, um, this is a one owner boat. It was actually originally ordered new, came straight to the lake and um, does not have a trailer with it. And we've got a nice, uh, good size bass just uh, coming over to say hello here just as we started up. So this is powered by a Merc Cruiser V8 350 mag inboard outboard stern drive engine with a Bravo 3 dual prop out drive. We're here for <coughs> excuse me, here for our video walkthrough tour as usual. You won't hear me mention the current asking price, and that's because the listing price will often change between when we list when we list one and, and when it sells. So we do uh, we do recommend that you visit the website. Now for your convenience, we will have a direct link down in the video description of this one that's gonna take you right to the listing page. We're gonna see that asking price. You're gonna see all of our contact information right there. Um, and again, it's just down in the video description. We're making it easy for you. You can copy and paste that link or you can click on that. Um, open that up in a new uh, browser or tab if you'd like. Um, if you do not wish to leave YouTube and, and you're trying to search and see what's available without leaving YouTube, I would highly recommend visiting our YouTube channel or as this video concludes in the top left hand corner of the video will be a, a link to, that will take you directly to our current listings playlist. If you, if you do make it over to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can get to that directly by, by um, going to youtube.com slash your new boat. You're going to have the option to pick from two different playlists there. One playlist is, is called current listings and the other playlist is our sold boat models that we leave up uh, for other people that are maybe in the market or trying to figure out what the layout of a particular model is and things like that. So we do leave those up uh, to just for reference, uh, for future reference to others. Hopefully they uh, can be helpful. So again, this is a 2003 Sea Ray 240. Uh, 240 signature bow rider. And again, we're here on uh, Norris Lake. Transferable slip. This is a one owner boat. Meaning this boat came here when it was new. It's been here ever since. And all the, um, all the hours on this one are all freshwater hours. All took place right here in, in East Tennessee. So um, here in our cockpit, we do have our snap-in carpeting. We've got the dual uh, driver and passenger bolster seats, the flip-up bolster seats. These simply can raise up and down. Both of these suites, excuse me, both of these seats are on a swivel here. You've got a nice uh, wood grain tilt steering wheel here at your driver's helm. This boat is equipped with trim tabs. These are these are uh, not to be confused with your outdrive trim, which you're going to do over here on your throttle. That's your your trim switch right there. That's going to take the outdrive trim up or down, which is going to either raise or lower uh, your bow rise. So just about all the time, you're going to start off with that trim all the way down. You're actually kind of pushing the bow down in the water, and then as you get up on plane, uh, then you're only going to adjust that trim just a little bit. Um, to, to kind of get the boat to ride at a level height and um, you know once that bow does come up just a little bit you're going to be be a lot more level now your trim tabs um, this is um, for the comfort of your riders if you've got more weight on one side of the boat than the other you can simply just use your trim tab here to level that rod out so um, that's kind of completely separate from your from your out drive trim or your drive trim that's here um, this is again, this is going to kind of allow you to uh, either uh, bring the left or your port side up or down and, and vice versa with your starboard side. We've got a um, 
stereo remote right here at your uh, at your driver's seat for easy access and then your gauges are going to consist of a fuel gauge battery volt tachometer speedometer there's your uh, engine oil pressure engine water temperature now right here in the center you've got a mercury smart craft display uh, this is a great feature this is going to have a few other um, items of interest uh, namely my favorite feature with this is going to be your uh, fuel economy or your gallon per hour use it's going to tell you this in at, in basically real time as you're going down the lake so that is very handy oftentimes you're just talking about a, a, a adjustment in a few hundred rpm can can go a long way in getting you a, a few more gallons per hour um, out of your um, engine performance so that's always handy anytime you've got a, a fuel flow fuel flow data or fuel economy data um, now over here just to the right driver's seat we have function tested what we can on this one um, you've got a uh, functioning uh, blower your bilge uh, your your navigation lights on the bow we function tested we have not we have not been able to function test your anchor light you do have some interior uh, lighting you've got a working water pump that's an onboard fresh water pump you've got a uh, windshield wiper here at your helm you've also got a functioning horn are 461 engine hours and that's another uh, uh, another set of data that is available right here through this Mercury Smart Craft uh, gauge. We also got a Ritchie compass just forward of your driver's seat here and in between the driver and passenger seat we've got a nice large in floor storage locker. Raise this up for you and I can't see a whole lot in here because that's where I've got our mooring cover and that is stowed away down in there that'll be transferring with the boat as well. This one's rated for 10. Uh, of course, we've got a bimini top overhead. I've got it back in the uh, the storage beat, uh, storage uh, cover, the storage boot uh, today. And we've got, um, we've got a couple of cup holders throughout. So we've got a uh, cup holder here. you got two over here by your passenger seat. That makes three. We've got four and five back here off of your uh, rear bench seat. And then up in the bow we've got we've got two more up there in the bow so that was uh two four six seven of those uh cup holders throughout got a nice little integrated cooler over here by your passenger seat uh that's self-draining little ice box there and then a glove box right here now the head unit for this stereo is right here in this in our uh, bow walkthrough and um, so this this door right here for the storage compartment also doubles as a wind block so as you can see right now for those chillier mornings or evenings or early season late season you've got the ability to kind of close off your cockpit here from from the wind get down behind your windshield of course you can take that windshield over and then you can also open that that up but while i do have that open that's when i want to show you our it's our clarion it's a am fm uh, cd stereo and we've got a clarion amplifier right under here as well and then we've got let's see where's our speakers at on this one our speakers are back here in the cockpit you've got one two along with the subwoofer that's a good size clarion subwoofer right there um four total cockpit speakers now when we function tested this these rear two speakers were not did not pass function testing. Now it could be something simple, um, but those two were not. So you, you've got two cockpit speakers and a good size subwoofer right now that are are all fully functional. Now across from this under helm storage, where there uh, uh, where that Clarion stereo head unit is, just across from there, we've got a little enclosed compartment right here. This would double as a head compartment. Now there is there's no head integrated. Um, this um, you'll often see a porta potty in in this compartment right here. But we've got a filler cushion um, on uh, what's well, in the center of the frame right now. That's just there for storage. You got a small little uh, shelf right here, and then here, of course, here's the back of that uh, Clarion subwoofer right there. So plenty of room. This can be storage. Um, this can um, can conceal a porta potty, and we've got a um, small little light down here as well it's missing that cover 
Now that filler cushion, we'll have photos of that at the at the uh, at the website. If you do um, take advantage of that link that we're going to be putting there for your convenience, um, you'll see as you go through the photo slideshow tour um, that filler cushion will will lay in this area right here, and essentially you can make a a, a nice large sun lounge right here with that filler cushion uh, which lays on top of a cockpit table that, that lays in this area right here we're going to have photos of this of this uh, seating area like it is now we'll have a few photos of it with the table in place and then we'll have a few photos with the table lowered and that filler cushion in place so you'll be able to see that now going up uh, to the bow area here there's our seating here in the bow area again those two integrated cup holders we got a small little courtesy interior light um, just uh, below that seat right there and then you, of course you've got some storage underneath all these seats as well now center cushion here will remove and essentially provide you a step and up here at the bow area here we've got nice little integrated Anchor locker, anchor storage locker. You can see you've got some rope down there as well. Close off. And there we have it. Okay. All right, turn around. Coming back here um, into the main cockpit again. Before we uh, raise the engine hatch, I want to point out we've got a battery selector switch right in this cubby right here. And of course you've got some storage underneath these seats as well. Raise our engine hatch, simply filling for that latch right there. That lifts that up and then here is that removable lounge table that we made reference to. Um, that's your uh, kind of dedicated storage space for that which makes that um, a nice convenient option and again that will mount right there. You can have that as a table. You can lower it as a filler cushion or you can leave it out altogether. And here's that Merc Cruiser 350 mag multi port fuel injected inboard outboard V8 stern drive engine. Got a C Fire automatic fire suppression system back here in your engine room. And again, 461 freshwater hours on this, this Merc Cruiser right here. Onboard fresh water pump, that is about an eight gallon um, fresh water tank right there. And again, it is, we are outfitted with dual batteries. Those batteries are removed right now. They're um, on a battery maintainer for the off season. And of course that eight gallon fresh water tank right there feeds to a little uh, pull out transom shower right there on the swim platform. Additional storage over here as well, as well as your other of those two batteries is gonna uh, be secured in on this side right here. This one's equipped with about a 55 gallon, I believe it is a 55 gallon uh, onboard fuel tank. You know, it's about an eight, eight gallon capacity fresh water tank. Um, let me see if I've got... few other specs on the boat here before we move on to our wear and tear I believe we're at a 25 and a half foot LOA your LOA stands for length overall and of course we'll also have all these all those details available at the website um, I thought I had it handy here, but I do not. It, I, I believe the dry weight of this one was, um, I want to say about 3,800 pounds, but um, oh, actually, you can go on here. Oh, my apologies. I thought I thought I had that information handy, so I, I'll... Um, I will not speak to the uh, Zach specs, but I do recall, I believe the LOA is 25 feet, 6 inches. It is an 8.5 foot beam. Um, dry weight, I want to say somewhere between 3,800 pounds and 4,200 pounds. But again, I'll, I'll, uh, 
I'll direct you to the website for that information so that we don't uh, don't make any errors here in our in our statement so um, we'll go ahead and review some of the wear and tear here in the cockpit and then we'll head to the swim deck take a look at the uh, that Bravo 3 dual prop out drive and then we'll we'll kind of get up close and personal with the uh, exterior here um, so we do have some wear on your vinyl right here a few little scratches on the gel coat up here on the uh, on the sides back up to the front here we got a little stain here on this seat that's not a rip or a tear just a little stain there um, for the most part your your vinyls in uh, what appears to be in pretty good service serviceable condition a few stains along the way here uh, again um, not noticing any rips or tears that was a little dirt right there a little bit of staining on this um, Top edge of this uh, this be the starboard side seat back. That's just some dirt right there. Maybe a little wear mark here. And I believe that is just a stain right there. Does not appear to want to brush off, but also um, does not appear to be a rip or a tear. Got a few marks here in our in our walkthrough here. And the gel coat coming through here is another you know, little minor little scratch in that gel coat there. Oh, you got to get the light to hit it just right. Can't tell if that's visible or not. A few other scratches right in here in this walkthrough. We do try to make every effort to represent these as accurate as possible. So if we do see anywhere, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna hide it from you. Um, driver and passenger seats. I uh, believe these are just some stains right here. Nope, that's dirt. That's also dirt. All right, so those are good. I'm gonna guess those are probably about the same. Those. Might clean right off of there. Yep, that's some more dirt here. We do have some staining kind of on the back of this seat. Just right here near the top. Uh, bolster looks to be in good shape over here. Driver's seat uh, looks like about the same. Got a little bit of light staining on here. A few spots in here. That's going to scrape off. Um, so you've either got some minor stains or just some dirt in here. I think that one also is going to come off of there. So I think you, you just need to use a little bit more cleaner in here. This boat was just detailed. But they may not have had spot removal cleaners that they needed for some of those areas. So I, I'm going to say you got maybe some dirt, maybe some stains on there. A little bit of stain right here as well. But again, otherwise, um, you know, again, here's another stain. No rips or tears. A little bit of a stain here. And... Similar staining in this area as well. We'll call that one a stain as well. But I'm um, not seeing a whole lot of wear with regards to rips and tear. A little bit of staining right back here in that area. And edges of that upholstery all also I'll be in pretty decent shape. So. I think the, the worst of it was right over in here. Um, now on your, your engine cover, which also kind of doubles as this nice sun lounge area, uh, we do have some staining on it. Bear with me here, I'm gonna get over to our swim platform. And here's your closer look at some of that. And and I will tell you, that stains, when, when they get the, to this level, that's not gonna come out. Um, Likely not at all. 
pretty much got that all the way over now this is white uh, so if you're careful you can use some um, a little bit more um, abrasive uh, cleaners right there and, and possibly get some of that stain uh, to disappear similar right here now this has a little bit of a, a, a tint to it but a bit of a different color then back to the white right here and and so this one you want to be careful not to bleach that out if you are trying to remove the spots on it and again similar similar uh, areas on this sun pad here final all appears to be in, in good condition except for some staining here's your ski tow hook right here it's where you're going to be where you're not going to pull any skiers or tubers anything of that nature and then here is that, that pull out transom shower right there with that onboard fresh water pump a little bit of wear on the swim platform you got a little stress crack right there um, this right here is actually going to lift up and this conceals the three-step swim boarding ladder right here that's going to fold out over the side of this extended swim platform and now i'm going to look to exit i'm going to come off here on the dock side here here's your fuel fill for that 55 gallon fuel tank bear with me here one moment okay made the transition down the dock so here's one of those trim tabs we did function test these um, these all appear to function test just fine here is that bravo 3 dual prop um, now drive and this has always been here in fresh water we get a little bit of wear down here at the bottom of this stern drive call your attention to that and I can't quite tell on our bellows right here exhaust bellows has a little bit of of uh, a flux to it right there so that's a good sign that's what you want to look for when those start getting real stiff and, and brittle that is when they are due to be serviced all right crawling back over to the back here we have some oxidation back here on on the back end of this boat you see right here where that you've got some cloudiness or some chalkiness there that's oxidation and you're gonna have a little bit of that down this this port side here you got some marks in the gel coat along the way a few marks in your rub rail up here as well small little stress crack right in here by your by your fuel cap okay up here above the rub rail you got a few little marks um, in your vinyl striping a few marks in the gel coat there's some wear in that striping there and follow that along Again, a few more marks in the rub rail up here a little bit more in some of that vinyl striping all right now i'm going to go back to where we just started and go below the rub rail this time shake kind of on this black hole side here that's where you got some of those marks and kind of be moving the camera angle up and down to let you get a glimpse of these so when you see that more of a uh, of a brighter white that's going to be a mark through the gel coat lighter one right here that one is if that's a end of the gel coat it's just barely that that but that again that kind of brighter white that's in the gel coat now here you see a little bit of that fiberglass showing through so that's gone through the gel coats in the fiberglass a little bit you're up here above the water line over here um so those you know none of those are really going to be a major concern but it is some wear and tear on the boat and it's our job to make you aware of that so you can make an informed person purchasing decision a little bit of dock rash right in here in this area mark in the uh stripe right here and a few more of those back here here's another little bit uh larger one right here this is kind of uh through the gel coat kind of in that fiberglass a little bit um this right here is this kind of at the water line right here at, at a minimum you're probably going to want to seal that off um especially if the boat is left in the water for any extended periods of time a little bit more of uh, kind of dock rash and scratches along the way here. And some additional dock rash up here. Especially right in here above this C-Ray logo. 
You see how those go up and down? That is where this just uh, did not have a fender in the right spot, set against the dock. Uh, took some wave action and, and you know basically just some scratches into that gel coat up and down and uh, these these ones that are more prevalent here that's just uh, extended period where it just kind of rubbed and scratched pretty good little mark in the gel coat there another another one here and then some some in your um, final striping here a little bit more dock rash in this area right here And I'm just taking this camera angle up and down to a lot of, a lot of these, um, you know, you've got to be at the right angle before those kind of um, show themselves. There's one in the Joe coat here. That one's into the gel coat as well. You can kind of see, as you get up closer, you see a little bit more definition on there. Those are the deeper marks. Now, before we leave this port side all together, let me come up here near the, near the V. Now, a lot of this probably transferred over from a fender. And you're probably going to be able to remove this. This this kind of line right here. That's that's come off of uh, probably a rubber or vinyl fender. That's going to come off. Got some marks right here that that are, are going to hang around. That's in the gel coat a little bit. And then typically up here in this um, right here on on your um, V lines, where you're going to see some marks from from hitting uh, coming into a dock. You can have some marks in here. And if we follow that line all the way down, we've got one area right there just below the water line. Now bear with me here. We'll get you a little bit better view of that. We'll have some photos of that as well. Now, you can move around in a few areas because we do have somewhere kind of under the water line that we want to make you aware of. That's one of those right here. We're just off the center of that keel line. And here's that keel line coming up. And that is the mark that we could just barely see from the dock side there. Hopefully that's in the frame right now. And then over here on the edge, we do have a little bit of uh, some dock rash right in here as well. And then again, that's that, that's that mark that we showed you right when we first started. Okay. Now I'm going to have to pull this camera angle back. And we'll climb back over to the dock side. We're going to transfer over to the starboard side. And we're going to work our way down that whole side as well. Um, let's let's kind of do the same over here. Let me go above the uh, above the rub rail first. We'll come right back up to the front, and then we'll go down lower. That's a little mark right there above the rub rail. little marks in the uh, that vinyl decaling again otherwise looks pretty good now here's that cloudiness right there that's where you get into that oxidation and then that's where you get some wear down there in that vinyl pretty good marks right there okay we're below the rub rail now a little, little bit of uh bit of marking right in that area that's going to be hard might be hard to see like kind of might have to hit it just right for it to show and again that the, the brighter white you see there can be indication of that being a little bit deeper into that gel coat um, this is probably one of those areas where, you, where it's going to come right off that's transferred over from a fender Okay. 
few more of those marks up here. Some marks in that vinyl. And similar to the other side, you've got that. This line right here is, is going to come off. That's transferred over. But now this, this is some, uh, kind of some minor scratching into that, uh, Joko. That's, that, that one's going to hang around. All right. Now bear with me here. Got a few more areas to see kind of below the water line here. Okay. So I believe we showed you that from both sides now. Decent look there. And then we do have a little bit of light scratching on the gel coat right in here. Just kind of moving this camera angle around it, give the chance for the light to hit it. So that's gonna show up for you. Just a little mark through the gel coat right there. Okay, I think the uh, whole side down here um, at the kill line is, is mostly good down here in the middle. Now I'm going to come up on the whole sides a little bit more. We're still kind of under the boat right now. And we've got another, another good one right here. And a little bit of a light scratch right in here. I don't, that's nothing major right there. This one here, here does have a little bit of a break through that gel coat surface that needs to be sealed at a minimum. And then let me reposition myself one more time here. I, I think we kind of got a glimpse of this one a minute ago when we came through below the rub rail, but there's that area again. And then Right on this on this um, whole edge, right about here in the sun, we've got a few places. I've got a beam in the way here. I mean, do what I can to show you that. You bear with me here. Okay, so it's right here. We're gonna go below this here, and yeah, that's a better look at it right there. One more right here. We'll be trying to show you these in the photographs as well. And again, you'll be able to you'll be able to view those following that link down in the video description. It's gonna be a direct link. It's gonna take you to our website. It's gonna be the, the listing page for this one at our website. And it's gonna have a photo slideshow. And the photo slideshow is, um, it kind of goes through the boat similar to the video. Go, go around the exterior, go through the interior, hit the engine room, and then typically the drive, and then we're going to start showing you wear and tear. So toward the end of that's where you're going to be able to see some of these same areas that we're trying to show you here in the video. And here's that Bravo 3, do a prop out drive underneath that extended swim platform. Your trim tab over here on this side, and... Over here in this corner again, you, you got some oxidation right over in here. And this is where it's kind of getting a lot of uh, a lot of the weather uh, where it's you know currently at this particular slip. But this is a one-owner boat, in good mechanical condition with 461 freshwater engine hours. Again, transferable slip it can stay right here where it's currently at. It's 24 foot. It's gonna be a nice size for our area. It's got a, a good deep V on it. It's gonna handle. Handle the uh, more crowded areas of the lake. It's a it's a heavier rod with uh, with that good deep V. And it's be a good option for for a lot of people. Great uh, great uh, first time uh, boat owners boat. This is a good size. I think a lot of uh, a lot of first time owners they'll they want to go maybe as new as they can afford and, and do that a lot of times you're going to give up a lot of size you know you might be in a 18 to 20 foot boat and and they're just not going to have a, a good deep v like uh this 
this 24 footer has and that deep V is is really going to help out when you're when you are out in rougher waters if you're if you're a weekend warrior if you're if you're out on the a lake on the weekends and you can't make it out on weekdays uh, 24 feet and larger now uh, with a nice deep V hull is going to handle uh, that either choppier water or just more crowded uh, congested areas of the lake this be also be a good option for somebody up on Lake Cumberland Dale Hollow some of the other larger lakes in the region uh, where you do have um, you know large large uh, areas of uh, lake you know if you want to get from one area of the lake to the other uh, this is going to be able to do so in a in a pretty good comfortable rod with that 350 mag again that's 300 horsepower and that Bravo 3 out drive is is really nice option as well so this is going to start to wrap up here fish just come by to say to say bye and um, as this video concludes, you're going to see two things pop up in the uh, top left corner and the top right corner of the video screen. Top left hand corner, it's going to be a shortcut to our current listings playlist. Uh, again, we referenced that earlier. If you're at YouTube, it's youtube.com slash your new boat. We'll show you both playlists, but the current uh, listings playlist is going to show you only what's currently available. And then the top right hand corner is a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. That's a great way to get notified. Google will actually notify you uh, via email anytime a new listing post um, or, or new video is posted, which um, in our case means a new listing is coming to market. So um, again, visit the website with any questions. We do not monitor the YouTube comment page. So if you do have any questions about this one, um, if you want to schedule a time to come see it, want to submit an offer or anything like that, you will have to use that direct link. It's there for your convenience. Click over to this listing on our website. You'll be able to reach out to us by phone, by text, or by email. Uh, if you do send us an email, you haven't gotten a business or you have not gotten a reply in one business day, check your spam folder. We're generally very quick about getting email replies out. Usually uh, it's a matter of a couple hours uh, during uh, during business hours. We're going to have a reply uh, heading back your way. And if you call us on the phone, you get our voicemail. Keep in mind we are very frequently in areas without cell phone reception. So if you do not leave a message, we will not know, know that you called. So if you want to return phone call, all you got to do, wait for the tone, leave us a message, let us know what listing you're looking at, what questions you have. Whenever we either finish with the customer or return to cell service area, we'll receive your message and we will return your call and answer all those questions for you. Again, this is the 2003 C-Ray 240 Signature Bow Rider for sale here on Norris Lake, Tennessee. One owner boat, transferable slip. I thank you again for joining us. And that's going to wrap things up for us uh, today. Again, uh, that top right hand corner, use that to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, we're happy to have you as a subscriber. And I thank you again for joining us.